The 20th century was awash with UFOs, though strange occurrences have and had always existed. It was only after the Second World War that the idea of flying saucers, abductions, and little green men really caught on in a big way. And no country is better known for alien visitations than the U.S., where close encounters became a top-tier government matter. This is Unveiled, and today we're answering the extraordinary question, what did Project Blue Book find? Are you a fiend for facts? Are you constantly curious? Then why not subscribe to Unveiled for more clips like this one and ring the bell for more fascinating content. Project Blue Book wasn't the United States' first foray into aliens and UFOs, but it was the longest lived and is today probably the most well known, beginning officially in 1952 and shutting up shop for good in 1970. The first sanctioned investigation before Blue Book was Project Sign, which was launched in 1947 as a direct response to the famous Kenneth Arnold UFO sighting. That same year, Arnold had claimed to have witnessed nine anomalous objects flying over Mount Rainier. This incident was the progenitor not only for modern UFO sightings, but also for the term flying saucer, which was invented by reporters to describe what Arnold said he had seen. Project Sign was only active for a year, however, concluding that UFOs needed more research. In its wake was born Project Grudge, another state effort to understand UFOs, but one which took a different approach. Rather than trying to actually explain the UFO phenomenon, Grudge was more preoccupied with disproving the extraterrestrial hypothesis, the idea that UFOs were alien spaceships. Ultimately, Grudge lasted for even less time than Sign did and was shelved in 1949. There's a conspiracy going on, the highest level of the government, to cover up the existence of extraterrestrial life. But neither Sign nor Grudge had yet been able to truly explain what UFOs were, and in the midst of the Cold War, mysterious flying objects were taken increasingly seriously by the U.S. authorities. And he thinks it could not only cost us the Cold War, but our long-term security as well. In fact, a spate of extreme UFO sightings in July 1952, culminating in what was dubbed the invasion of Washington in D.C., was taken seriously enough that the CIA formed the Robertson Panel, a group of scientists tasked with judging the severity of the UFO threat. The Robertson Panel met just a few months after the formation of the United States' third UFO initiative, Project Blue Book, and it provided this small, fledging department with one of its most important guidelines, that unexplained incidents should be withheld as much as possible from the public, so as not to cause mass hysteria. We can say that the recent sightings are in no way connected with any secret development by any department of the United States. Keeping the American people calm was seen as vital because the CIA believed that the USSR could capitalize on a panic around UFOs to launch surprise attack. So Blue Book was given a mandate for secrecy as it entered into further operations. The most important members of Blue Book when it was launched were probably Captain Edward J. Ruppelt, its first leader, and astronomer Dr. J. Allen Hynek, who was also on the Robertson panel. Ruppelt was said to be open-minded about the link between UFOs and extraterrestrial vehicles, while Hynek was a leading scientist who started the project a skeptic, but it ended slightly less so. Unfortunately, their partnership wasn't to last, while Hynek remained a part of Blue Book until its closure and then went on to speak and write about extraterrestrials from a scientific standpoint, Ruppelt left in 1954, just two years after Blue Book's launch. The initiative never again had a leader who took ufology quite as seriously, and under the leadership of Major Hector Quentinella in particular, Blue Book received mounting heavy criticism from the wider public. Don't talk about this until you know what you're talking about, okay? Honey, that's crazy. If I can't talk about it, then how am I going to know what's going on? People were becoming frustrated and desperate for solid, valid explanations for UFOs which Blue Book continually couldn't or wouldn't provide, preferring instead to err toward caution by debunking whenever possible. NICAP, or the National Investigations Committee on Aerial Phenomenon, was even set up to effectively vet Blue Book as, throughout the 1960s, the U.S. government's most significant run at understanding UFOs fell more and more out of favor. 
In the end, Blue Book's reputation plummeted, with amateur ufologists disbelieving Blue Book reports, most of which served to rubbish the link between UFOs and aliens and accusing it of being part of a government cover-up, all while the U.S. Air Force branded it a waste of money and resources. Well, Captain Quinn and I, we believe that uh, until we have real answers, science and observation are the, the best way forward. Eventually, even Hynek, the one-time skeptic, began publicly disagreeing with certain anti-UFO verdicts that Blue Book had reached about various sightings. And in 1969, the order was given for Blue Book to be disbanded for good. But surely after investigating UFOs for the better part of 17 years, Blue Book must have found something. The team behind it examined 12,618 separate UFO reports after all. And as the 60s wore on, one particular explanation repeatedly rose to the surface. Spy planes. Specifically, the U-2 and the A-12 spy planes, both of which were deemed to look sufficiently weird or unusual to the untrained eyes of the sky-scanning American public. According to state records and Blue Book findings, many of the mid-20th century UFO sightings can be explained away simply as secret military tests of stealth aircraft, many of which were carried out at the now notorious Area 51. There's also, of course, the infamous weather balloon excuse where various UFOs, including those fueling the Roswell incident in 1947, were officially recognized as errant climatological tools. The balloon explanation has historically attracted skepticism, although some believe that there may have been at least some truth to it, citing now declassified Project Mogul as a potential reason in which the U.S. Air Force used high-altitude weather balloons in a bid to detect and monitor Soviet atom bomb tests. Throughout its run, Blue Book at least proved one thing, that America was the world leader when it came to UFO sightings, a fact perhaps not too surprising when we consider that the states also had the world's most advanced and enigmatic military in the 50s and 60s. Even the Soviets didn't investigate UFOs quite like the U.S. did. Although there was a USSR equivalent of Blue Book, a state-mandated joint operation by the Soviet Ministry of Defense and the Academy of Sciences. It launched much later than its U.S. counterpart, though in 1977, after the famed Petrozavost jellyfish UFO sighting, the Soviet version of Blue Book went on to operate for 13 years, investigating some 3,000 UFO sightings, with around 300 of those deemed truly unidentified. The program only ended when the Soviet Union collapsed. Today, we know that even the event which spurred the Soviets into action, the Petrozavosk jellyfish, has been attributed to a satellite launch from a nearby Cosmodrome. But in general, the USSR found many of the same explanations as Blue Book in the U.S. did, explaining most UFOs away as military tests, optical illusions, or standard non-extraterrestrial rocket launches. But despite its tumultuous history, Blue Book has left no small legacy. Perhaps its biggest contribution to ufology came from Captain Ruppelt in the early days, when he first coined the term unidentified flying object to describe the phenomenon that his department was investigating. What you're seeing, gentlemen, is an unidentified flying object picked up by our radar. Until we get positive identification, we regard it as hostile. And despite the constant secrecy, now almost all of Blue Book's files are available online through both the U.S. National Archives and a website called The Black Vault, a large database compiled by the amateur investigator John Greenwald, who has himself submitted thousands of requests under the Freedom of Information Act for the Blue Book files. Today, The Black Vault boasts more than 130,000 pages of declassified documents. Heineck, too, is still regarded as one of the most influential figures in the field, having collected the original list of close encounters for Blue Book, and afterwards having served as a consultant on the 1977 Steven Spielberg movie, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. What did you expect to find? An answer. That's not crazy, is it? Significantly, of the 12,618 sightings investigated by Blue Book, 701 of them remain unsolved to this day, arguably highlighting the need for even more research into what they were. And what's perhaps even more intriguing is that while the FBI claimed that post-Blue Book they saw no need to further investigate UFOs, in 2017, it made public that between the years of 2007 and 2012, a $22 million program charged with investigating UFOs existed at the Pentagon, called the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. 
Many believe that the other similarly classified investigations could continue to this day. Back in the 1950s, Blue Book's aims at the beginning were simply to gather and study data and ultimately discover whether UFOs were a threat to national security. Though it eventually lost credibility, if you take the team first led by Ruppelt at their word, then the vast majority of UFO cases can be logically debunked as definitely not extraterrestrial in origin. More likely, they were an accidental offshoot of top-secret military testing. And ultimately, even those incidents that Blue Book couldn't rationally explain did not, according to them, indicate that UFOs really were extraterrestrial vehicles. Dr. Heineck, see so you got my message. You owe me some answers. For the remainder of his life, Heineck, now the subject of a History Channel TV show dramatizing Blue Book, encouraged people to look for logical explanations first before arriving at the alien conclusion. But the alien argument has never truly died down. Are we alone in the universe? Impossible. When you consider the wonders that exist all around us, voodoo priests of Haiti, the Tibetan numerologists of Appalachia, the unsolved mysteries of unsolved mysteries, the truth is out there. In the end, Blue Book created an exhaustive log of UFO sightings, which are now available online for anyone to look through at their leisure. For the most part, they don't prove anything concrete, but who knows? Maybe the truth really is out there and hidden in those thousands of declassified files. And that's what Project Blue Book found. What do you think? Is there anything we missed? Let us know in the comments, check out these other clips from Unveiled, and make sure you subscribe and ring the bell for our latest content.